Second Kings Lesson Seven: Jehu becomes king. Our lesson today is from Second Kings chapters eight through ten. We will find out about some wicked kings of Israel and some wicked kings of Aram. We will learn about King Jehu of Israel, who started out doing good things. We will hear about the death of wicked Jezebel and how prophecy was fulfilled. But first, let's listen as James and his teacher talk about violence in the Bible. Hi, teacher. Why are there so many violent things in the Bible? Hi, James. Well, this world is not how God intended it to be. What went wrong? Sin entered the world. Sin brought death and violence and wars and theft and a host of other evils. And that's why there is so much violence in the Bible. Yes, and in our Bible lesson today, we are going to hear about some very violent things. Oh, I hope I don't have nightmares. I don't think you will have any nightmares, James. But I do think you should remember that sin leads to a lot of pain and suffering and sadness. I don't think I want to sin if it leads to all of those things. Everyone would be much happier if they didn't sin. That's for sure. Then why do people sin? We all sin because we have a sin nature. What does that mean? It means that because we are descendants of Adam and Eve, they passed on their sin nature to us. That makes us all sinners. Can't we stop sinning? We can definitely become more like Christ every day, but we will never be perfect. Never? We will never become perfect here on earth. Only when we get to heaven will be we be free from sin. That's kind of sad and also kind of good. Why do you say that, James? Well, it's kind of sad because I don't want to sin, and I know I will sin. But kind of good because I know if I do sin, it's because I'm a sinner. Well, that's a good way to look at it, James. Now get ready for our lesson today because there are a lot of violent things that happen as a result of sin. Elisha traveled into the land ruled by the king of Aram to the city of Damascus. When King Ben Hadad of Aram heard that Elisha was there, he sent a man named Hazael to go see Elisha. Take a gift with you and go meet the man of God. Ask the Lord through him if I will recover from my sickness. So Hazael went to see Elisha and took a gift with him. Forty camel loads of all kinds of goods from Damascus. When Hazael located Elisha, he asked him, "Will King Ben Hadad recover from his sickness?" Elisha replied, "Go and say to him, 'You will surely recover.' But the Lord has shown me that he will surely die." And then Elisha started to weep. "Why are you weeping?" asked Hazael. Because I know the evil you will do to the people of Israel, you will brutally murder men and women and children, and you will set their fortresses on fire. How could I possibly do such wicked things? Hazael asked. Because the Lord has shown me that you will be the next king over Aram, Elisha replied. The next day, Hazael. Took a heavy cloth, dipped it in water, and held it down over the king's face until he suffocated to death. Hazael became the next king of Israel, just as the Lord had shown Elisha. King Jehoshaphat in Judah was a good king that loved the Lord. When he died, his son Jehoram became king. Sadly, King Jehoram of Judah did not follow the ways of the Lord as his father Jehoshaphat had done. His wife was wicked King Ahab's daughter. Jehoram did what was evil in the Lord's sight. The Lord was not willing to destroy Judah because of King David. Jehoram reigned eight years and then he died. Ahaziah, son of Jehoram, became the next king of Judah. He was just twenty-two years old when he became king, and he reigned only one year. He also did what was evil in the Lord's sight.
One day Elisha called one of the young prophets over to him and said, Take this flask of oil and go to the city of Ramoth-Gilead and look for a man named Jehu, son of Jehoshaphat. Go and get him away from his friends and take him to an inner room. Then take out this flask of oil and pour it on his head and say, This is what the Lord says, I will anoint you king over Israel. Then open the door and run. Don't wait for him to answer. So the young prophet went to Ramoth Gilead. When he got there, all of the army commanders were sitting around talking. The young prophet said, I have a message for you, commander. Jehu replied, For which one of us? The young prophet replied, For you, commander. So Jehu got up and went into the house. The young prophet poured the oil on his head and said, This is what the Lord God of Israel says. I anoint you king over the Lord's people of Israel. You are to strike down the house of your master Ahab, so that I may avenge the blood shed by the hand of Jezebel, the blood of my servants and prophets. The whole house of Ahab will perish, and the dogs will eat Jezebel in the plot of land at Jezreel. No one will bury her. Then the young prophet opened the door and ran out. When Jehu came out, the other commanders asked, Is everything all right? What did that crazy person want? Oh, you know that type of person. The ranting doesn't mean anything. But the other commanders all replied, You're not telling us the truth. Tell us what he said. So Jehu said, He talked to me about this and that, and then he said, This is what the Lord says. I anoint you king of Israel. Each man quickly took off their cloak and spread it out on the bare steps. They blew a ram's horn, and they proclaimed, Jehu is king! Wicked King Joram of Israel was in pain. He had been wounded in a battle with King Hazael of Aram. Now he stayed in the town of Jezreel while he recovered from his wounds. King Ahaziah from Judah came to visit King Joram while he recovered. While the two kings were there in Jezreel, Jehu got into his chariot and traveled to Jezreel. As he approached the king's house, the watchman standing on the tower saw Jehu and his troops getting closer. The watchman shouted, I see troops! King Joram responded, Send a rider out to meet him and find out if he comes in peace. So a horseman went out to meet Jehu and said, This is what the king asks. Do you come in peace? Jehu replied, What do you know about peace? Fall in behind me. The watchman reported to King Joram, The messenger reached him, but he hasn't come back. So he sent out a second horseman who asked Jehu, Do you come in peace? Again Jehu answered, What do you know about peace? Fall in behind me. The watchman reported to King Joram, The second messenger reached him, but he isn't coming back. Also, the man is driving like Jehu. He drives like a madman. Harness! King Joram shouted. Harness my chariot at once! King Joram was afraid. The man would not say he was coming in peace, so the king knew he was in danger. King Ahaziah hurriedly got into his chariot. King Joram of Israel and King Ahaziah of Judah set out, each in his own chariot. They met up with Jehu at the plot of land that had belonged to Naboth. Do you come in peace? King Joram asked Jehu. What peace can there be as long as there is so much evil from your mother Jezebel? Jehu replied. King Joram turned his chariot around and fled, shouting, It's treachery, Ahaziah! Jehu picked up his bow, put an arrow on it, and pulled back the string as far as it would go. He aimed at wicked King Joram and let the arrow fly. Whoosh! It hit King Joram between the shoulders. The arrow went through his heart, and he slumped down in his chariot and died. When King Ahaziah saw what was happening, he turned his chariot around and fled up the road. Jehu shouted, Shoot him too! Ahaziah was shot as he was fleeing. 
he was badly wounded and died later at Megiddo. King Ahaziah was also a blood relative of wicked King Ahab. He was Ahab's grandson and therefore was included in the prophecy of the destruction of Ahab and his descendants. When Jehu came to Jezreel, Jezebel heard about it. She painted her eyes and fixed her hair and stood in the window of her palace and looked down. Do you come in peace, Zimri, killer of your master? Jezebel called Jehu Zimri after the man who assassinated King Basha of Israel. You can read about that in 1 Kings chapter 16, verses 9 through 12. It was her way of calling Jehu a despicable rebel. Well, Jehu looked up towards the window and shouted, Who is on my side? Who? Two or three men came to the window and looked down at him. Throw her down, Jehu shouted. The men picked up Jezebel and threw her out the window. The evil, wicked, sinful, immoral, unpleasant, fierce, nasty, and just plain bad Jezebel was finally dead. Jehu went in and ate and drank. When he was done eating, he said, Take that cursed woman and bury her, since she is the king's daughter. But when they went out to bury Jezebel, they did not find anything except her skull, her feet, and the palms of her hands. This fulfilled the prophecy that the Lord spoke through Elijah. In the plot of land at Jezreel, the dogs will eat Jezebel's flesh, so that no one will be able to say, This is Jezebel. So the prophecy about Jezebel that had been spoken by Elijah years before came true exactly as prophesied. As the new king of Israel, Jehu ordered the killing of all of Ahab's seventy sons. Their heads were put into a basket and sent to Jehu. This was suitable for Ahab's sin. After murdering Naboth, he had sent for baskets of grapes out of Naboth's vineyard at Jezreel. Now the heads of his sons are brought to Jehu in baskets. Jehu went on to kill all the descendants of King Ahaziah of Judah. All forty-two of them were killed. When Jehu came to Samaria, he struck down all who remained from the house of Ahab in Samaria. Jehu then rounded up all the prophets of Baal and killed them. Then he tore down the temple of Baal and turned it into a public toilet. So Jehu eliminated Baal worship from Israel. But he did not get rid of the golden calves that were in Bethel and Dan. So the people of Israel continued to worship idols. Jehu started out obeying the Lord completely, but he did not completely wipe out pagan worship from Israel. Jehu started out obeying the Lord, but by not taking heed to walk in the law of the Lord God, Jehu showed that he did not live a life in fellowship with God. He was a success in one regard, but a successful failure. There are several things we can learn from this lesson. I've thought of a few things, and maybe you can think of some more. First, God knew the wicked things that Hazael would do, and he revealed them to Elisha. But God did not make Hazael do those wicked things. Each of us is completely responsible for our own actions. We cannot use excuses such as, The devil made me do it, or That's the way I was raised. Each of us is personally responsible for the things we do. Second, you and I can be busy doing good things, yet not be living in fellowship with God. We need to make sure we are not only busy doing things for the Lord, but that we are also walking with Him in our daily lives. Third, we need to guard against just putting on the appearance of being godly in school, in church, and on social media. Our lives should be genuinely characterized by the fruit of the Spirit, love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control.